his mouth swollen and everything. So it was like, when he left the next night, I got to Long Island. I wasn't talking to Dino Bravo ever in my life again from that day on because uh, the way he treated me in front of the Bulldogs when I was vulnerable, very vulnerable. And uh, so he came into our dressing room the next night and he says to Raymond, so he knows I'm not talking, I'm not even looking at it. So he says to Raymond, he says, guys, he actually talks to both of us, but he's talking to Raymond, he says, guys, he said, I got good news and I got bad news. So Raymond looks at him, you know, and, he, and he says, he's on crutches too, and he says, uh, he says, well, he says, okay, he says, what's the good news? He says, the good news is that the Bulldogs just gave their notice. They're quitting the business. So Raymond looks at him and he says, well, what's the bad news? Well, he says, the bad news is the Bulldogs just gave their notice. They're quitting the business. So Raymond says, well, why that's bad news? And then it clicked in my head. They'd rather lose their job and beat me up really bad before they leave, you know? And so what a shock came into me. And then, so, so, so anyway, well, two weeks later. Well, he thought they were going to try and get revenge. Yeah, well, that's what he said, you know. Because there was a Survivor Series. Yeah, so. yeah. And not only that, they came back from Tucson, Phoenix. We had a week tour before that. Yeah. So, but when he said that, it came to my mind right away. They don't give a shit about their job. They just want to save their honor. Right. You know, that's so it. That's the way I am. Yeah. And I'm a coward. You know, like, it's like, so imagine them being bullies and tough guys. They got to yeah, save yeah. their honor. So it's like, uh, so anyway, so long story short, they went to do their trip. And then two weeks later, uh, Vince had us meet in Chicago O'Hara in a private room. The Bulldogs and us, Vince came to meet us. No, it wasn't Chicago. I think it was further west than that. It was on the west coast completely. It was, was in at Seattle. No, at the airport. Oh, at the Admiral airport? Lounge, you know, like the big, uh, oh, yes, the, yeah. the big lounges. Yeah. The guys have the frequent flyers that are gold. And so anyway, we went to meet there. So I remember coming down the hallway and getting off the plane and seeing the gate and the number of the room we were supposed to get into. And I see the Bulldogs in front of us. Yeah. They're walking in there. So and then they, they, they're walking and then they turn out and they leave. So me and Raymond are coming and Vince is already in the room. So, so we come in the room and we go to sit down and uh, we're sitting down, the door's there and there's it's like a U and they're going to sit on the other side, Vince is there. So when they came in, they came behind us, which I didn't like the feeling. They came behind us and they went to sit down. And it was so funny because he wasn't the same guy. Uh, Dynamite Kid was in front of me and uh, Vince started talking, guys, you know, you know this has been too far, you know, and blah, 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 blah. blah. And I can't remember the conversation. I could just re remember... Vince saying, you guys are going to be working together in the same towns. Not together, but in the same towns. Right. Coming up. And he says, I don't want anything to happen. And he said, I guarantee you. And then Dynamite Kid cut him off. He says, this is what he said. I'm going to emphasize on how he said it. The same way I did. Let me say something, Vince. He says, uh, we're going to be a two-thong. We're going to be a two-thong together. Because he couldn't speak without his teeth. The same way I couldn't speak to my dad. And nobody else for about a week. And he says, there ain't going to be no trouble, no trouble. And he says, I, I, I know the Ruzo family. He says, they have a lot of respect. And he says, uh, he, he almost like apologized. It was weird. Anyway, and uh, so after that, we shook hands. And we left there, and I knew it wasn't a real shake hands. But maybe it was. But anyway, I've never, anyway so long story short, as we left there, the, ne the same night we're in Tucson. I got to tell you something. Me and Raymond, when we got to the arena, coming in the back parking and everything, you, there's not a place that I didn't look. Right. Like, you know, behind the garbage can, behind yes. something, behind the wall. Every, every time I turned or faced them, I, I was waiting for a baseball bat. I was waiting for, that's how I lived for a week before I got to Survivor Series. And when we got to Survivor Series, I got the worst treatment I ever had in my life. We got there like at 10 in the morning, 11 in the morning. We were wrestling against the Bulldogs. It was three against three. Right. I can't remember who was in the match, but I know it was just three against three. I, yeah. just, I just remember me and Raymond were in there. Three teams. Yeah, it was it, yeah. Well, four. Well, four against four. Three yeah, against three. Yeah, you know, it was special. It was, it was the first Survivor Series yeah. ever. It was in uh, Ohio somewhere. Just to, yeah, yeah, Cleveland. Yeah. Just to, rem just to remind, to, to tell you how much I was in, uh, in the days there. I don't know who the other partners were. I just remember I had to be in the same ring with these guys. Right. And, 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 and uh, it was 10 in the morning when we got there and and usually by one o'clock all the matches the guys have spoke what they're gonna do who's gonna win and this and it was like six o'clock at night and Vince had never got us together the agents has never got us together they made me sweat all day long like you know just waiting to see and then finally uh, we were called in the dressing room uh, Bulldogs and the, uh, and the Rougeos and the this and this and the other guys let's go to see Vince so we get and we sit in front of Vince and Vince starts talking he says okay guys he says uh We'd like to uh, get this this team over, whoever it was. I can't remember who it was. We were the first ones out. Anyway, so so he says, okay. He says, how are we going to do this match? Vince stayed there with the agent to see how we're going to do this. So Dynamite 
uh, said, uh, actually Davy Boy, he said, uh, well, I want to start the match with Jacques. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. It was like a nightmare. And I'm, and I'm proud, you know, so, so I'm, I'm not saying anything, but I'm really in my pants, you know. And I'm like, I'm not saying anything. I'm one of the strongest guys in the history of WWE. I'm playing tough guy, you know, like just to save my image, save face. And I, uh, so he says to me, he says, okay, uh, Jacques says, you grab a headlock. And uh, no, he didn't say Jacques. He says, you grab a headlock. He treated me like, he says, grab a, I tried to intimidate me. He says, grab a headlock. He says, shoot me in the ropes. He says, give me a tackle. He says, I'll drop down. He says, when you come off, I'm going to press you. And he says, I'm going to press you at the end of my arms. And he says, when I do, he says, you're Raymond, you come in. And he says, I'm going to throw you onto Raymond. So I looked at, I said, he didn't even have a time to finish his sentence. And I said, no problem, I like it. And I wanted to show him, like, I can't say the word, like, you know, right, right. F you. Yeah. Like, you know, you're not going yeah. you're not you're gonna, to, you're not going to break me here. Right. You know, that's it. You're not going to intimidate me. Exactly. So when he finished this high spot where I'm at the end of his arms like this, where I know he's going to back up on the ropes and he's going to throw me head first on the cement floor. That's the only thing that kept going through my mind. He's going to put me in a wheelchair, you know, before the end of the match. I said, yes, sir. I like that very much. And even Vince looked at me and they said, okay. He said, after that, he says, you get the pin. So the rouge was eliminated. And he said, then they could, so, so we left right away. They continued the match. When they continued the match, Vince left the gang that were talking about the matches. He came backstage. Yeah. And he, see, he, he says, guys, come here. He says, can I ask you a favor? He says, I want to ask you a favor. He says, just for their ego. He says, just for them, you know, to, to satisfy, get some satisfaction. Yeah. He says, would you mind when you finish your match, take your stuff, don't take a shower and go to the hotel. Right. Of course you're going to do what you're told. And it's like, it's like he wanted me to be a coward. Right. Like, you know, in my mind. I didn't like that very much. Yeah. And, I, and, and Raymond looked at him and he says, uh, okay. He says, we'll do it. And I was hesitating. Like, you know, I, I wanted to go all the way to the end this because I was right. I had no right. reason to run. I, I was right in the whole time. Right. So you don't run away when you're right. You know, no. <laughs> so, so. But at the same time, I was afraid and I was tired of this. It was a long battle for about a month now, three weeks. And you won because they were leaving. <laughs> and they were leaving and he got beat up, you know. So. That was the end of the Bulldogs. And that was, yeah. So they ended up. Right and if anybody ever asks me, uh, Jacques, I tell you guys to take a shower, it's because I always said it's because Vince asked us to do it, you know, to, to calm them down. So that's right. what happened. And, and, uh, and actually, Davey's son, who is who's friends with me, told me to actually tell you the next time I saw you to thank you for doing what you did. To really? Dynamite. Really? Because Dynamite ended up having a huge falling out with uh, with Davey down the road. Well, that was funny because a year and a half later, I'm the Mountie now. Yes. And uh, Davey Boy, I come into the dressing room one night. The worst nightmare ever happened to me. I come into the dressing room and I see Davey Boy Smith sitting there. And I'm going like this. And then I looked at Davey Boy like this. As soon as I walked in, I looked at him. I put my head down. And I went to put my stuff down, and the worst, I swear, the worst feeling came into me, like, I don't want this anymore. <laughs> like, I was by myself, too, now, no more Raymond. I'm the Mountie by myself. Right. And I said, I can't face all this again. And then Davey Boy came to me, and he said, Jacques, can I talk to you in the shower? Incredible. So was gonna... I thought he was going to beat yeah, me up yeah. again. You know, or, so then I look at him, and you know me. I look up, and I said, sure. <laughs> So I so got you're up. The worst. So I expected. I got into the room, and then he says, "Hey, he says, I want you to know something." He says, uh, "I don't speak to dynamite anymore." And he says, uh, "I think what you did, you did what you had to do." And he says, "I have nothing to do with it. I don't want no animosity with you." And he says, "I'd like us to be friends." Right. So he shook my hand, and then from then on, I, I didn't know if it was real or not, but I was happy to yeah, get that kind of uh, reception, you know, from him. And then, and and the worst feeling I've had after that, I got to tell you, is about three years ago. Uh, I had an autograph signing in Manchester right. and uh, I was with my wife and we were going to Paris for two days on a vacation and, uh, and, and then I realized I was in his hometown and I realized that if it would have been me, I probably would have set something up where I would have beat him up really bad. <laughs> Coming into my hometown to sign autographs, you know, it's like embarrassing, you know, it's yeah. insulting. And, and, but I just did it because they were giving me so much money that no, I had I to do it. Probably still holds a grudge. Of course. So the whole time I went to Paris with my wife, I was the, I was visiting uh, the, the, everything, you know, the boats on the river and the, the Lac de Triomphe and everything. I was out. The only thing I had in mind was watch your back when you get off the plane in Manchester. Watch your back. And, 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 and I can't, I'll never forget the sheet, the iron sheet. The first guy who came to see me when I was in the, the lobby of the hotel, he says, I can't believe it, Rucho. You come in the town of the guy you beat. I can't believe it. And he's talking like this. And it's like, I'm looking at him like, shut up. 
just <laughs> shut up. <laughs> just please don't bring it back up. You know? <laughs> and uh, oh, you're my hero, Rujo, you're my hero. And me, I was so like afraid, you know, like all that time. So anyway, it passed. And when I took the flight, to get, got on the flight, the doors were shut and I left with my paycheck. I knew them, you know, and uh, now it's over. But uh, like 15 years later, it was over. It took 15 years before it was over in my mind. And, I, and I've heard you, s you say before that if you saw him today, you would shake his hand. I would. Because of the originally, now all the grudge is gone, everything's gone. I was a fan of his. Right. As, most As a wrestler. Yeah, right. As a wrestler. And you had some great matches, the SummerSlam match. It was awesome, that first match. You actually opened, weren't you the first match in the history of SummerSlam? SummerSlam 88, I don't know. You, you, I don't know. versus uh, the Rougeau brothers. I don't know, I don't know.